Hello everyone and welcome back to week 7 top 10 gangspanks. Now I need to clarify a few things before we start this week so we're all on the same page. For this video even players who are just co-oping through the game will be referred to as gankers to keep things simple and also in a 3v1 fight if the player just kills the host but leaves the other two phantoms alive that still counts as a gang spank. Finally, YouTube's messaging system has changed and become worse as usual, so watch till the end of this video to find out how to submit for the next countdown. Jumping right in at number 10, we have a blue invader versus a host and his pet sunbro in Earthen Peak. He's got a fairly simple setup, a katana with the blossom kite shield, a pretty useful shield that regenerates stamina. Now he's playing patiently, moving back when he starts getting overwhelmed and looking for an opening which is so crucial when you're facing more than one player. This does pay off as he eventually lands a guard break riposte on the host. The Sunbro continues attacking, but when you're in a critical attack animation, damage is reduced, of course. Really slick move there as he rolls through the Sunbro's attack and chains the riposte into a backstab. He then tries to punish the host's healing, but has to react to the yellow summon behind him, which he finally manages to defeat with a counter-attack roll backstab. As per usual, once the host loses his buddy, he becomes ultra defensive, and the blue invader uses a Lloyd's Talisman, which is unusual, because they suck. Apart from that, he attempts to guard break his opponent a couple times because of his great shield turtling strategy and eventually outplays his opponent and manages to land a backstab. And afterwards, instead of rolling, his opponent continues to block, allowing him to combo a last final guard break, gaining the victory. Nice job. Moving on to number 9, we have another blue invader, except this time he's up against a triple threat in Heidi's Tower of Flame. He immediately goes in on the Sunbro with a few raw sentinels helping him out. There's a white phantom in the background spamming flame swathe, which isn't much of a threat, but it's an added distraction. He's got a standard claymore, which is a very decent weapon, and he starts fighting it out with the host as the Sunbro dies in the destruction behind them. The host definitely seems to be more of a tank build. He's got a heavy strength weapon, he's fat rolling, and he does have on the Gower's Ring of Protection, which prevents all damage from behind as well as backstabs. Segments in the clips where nothing significant happens will be sped up, like right here. Basically the host is starting to panic and trying to escape while the white summon continues to add pressure on the invader. It's currently quite difficult to punish someone who's healing with a Gower's Ring, especially when they have a summon coming after you, although this should change in the upcoming patch. So he patiently waits for an opportunity, which arrives in the form of a parry performed on the white summon. He uses good spacing to avoid the host's R2 attack and still takes the riposte, which finishes off the summon. The blue invader tries to break his Gower's ring by repeatedly striking his back, but it doesn't quite work out. The host lures the invader on this narrow pathway in one last desperate attempt, but has the tables turned on him as some final few hits end up pushing him off the path into the watery depths below. That was impressive. Congratulations. Number 8, Red Phantom, this time in the Lost Bastille just before the Ruined Sentinels. He finds himself trapped in the hallway against two other players who start forcing him to back down the narrow space despite his attempt at pushing them back. This is a really tough position to be in and he uses Wrath of the Gods to get some breathing space but they simply hang back and then punish him hard with a Forbidden Sun and a deadly Santier Spear stunlock combo. Incredibly, he gets a parry with a sliver of health left and then takes the riposte just in time, defeating the host right as the white summon finishes him off as well. So tense man, well done for taking the 8th spot. Number 7 involves another 3 man gank squad and a ninja red phantom, that parkour though. He uses a Firestorm, which damages the White Summon, but unfortunately he does get backstabbed by the Sunbro. The White Summon starts firing off sorceries and the Sunbro is looking pretty feisty, so the invader understandably backs up and tries to get to a better position. At the top of the stairs, the Sunbro chases him and whiffs, and gets slammed by a Drake Keeper from behind and finished off with a Great Combustion. This does even things up a bit and the invader begins to target the heavily armoured White Summon. Gotta give respect for not going straight for the host, he clearly wanted to add a triple kill to his daily achievements list. Nice quick back massage there, which doesn't affect the White Havel monster too badly. The host is looking slightly confused as to whether he has the courage to join in or not. A very important point to remember here is that once invaded, summons cannot use their healing items, and unlike Dark Souls 1, the host cannot heal them with Estus either. So after a badly timed firestorm, the invader recovers and gets another backstab slowly chipping away that health. We then have some figure 8 running manoeuvres which does allow him to avoid the white summon's heavy attack and he retaliates with a poke and a few more quick slashes. This could be it, I think the host has decided to stay out the way for now and there we go, that's the Havel monster taken care of. Now it's time for the host. A quick sped up chase scene ends with the invader getting a quick hit, separating and then using some good spacing to run in and punish the host's spin to win attack. Now they're in the hallway and they're having a bit of a fight. 
rolling, hitting the wall, smashing their equipment, breaking it everywhere. <laughs> and he finally gets a backstab for the win. Very impressive submission. Congratulations on getting the seventh spot. Let's look at number six. Okay, number six is a 2v1 with a red phantom sorcerer using the Moonlight Greatsword with those lovely looking R2s. Straight off the bat, he gets a successful guard break for some pretty decent damage. Then in comes the host, trying to save his buddy. However, he simply receives another blast of moonlight, straight to the face. The invader then performs a really cool move in my opinion. By using dark fog in the center, he splits up the host from his summon, as well as reducing visibility, which gives him some time to focus on trying to take out the gold summon. The host gets backstabbed as he rejoins the fight, but then the red invader tanks a couple of hits from the summon until his stamina runs out. Another Moonlight Greatsword R2 attack is slightly less successful this time, as it was blocked by the summon, as was his follow-up guard break. The yellow summon actually uses a Moonlight Greatsword special attack of his own, but is punished appropriately with a final backstab, which now just leaves the host, who has presumably been trying to summon more help all this time. The invader uses warmth, which is always a great pyromancy to have while invading. He does a good job of staying near its healing radius while fighting off the host. He casts Dark Fog again, which is really a smart way of controlling the surrounding area. A quick backstab deals a pretty large chunk of damage, and then the invader runs back, anticipates the host's healing, and wrecks him with a two-handed special attack for the win. He then gets out the trident to have a little dance, which I believe is the most honourable way of showing respect, so that was nice of him. Number 5 is a pretty interesting encounter in the Tower of Flame. This unlucky invader encounters a host and two summons, however in this case the host is wearing a white ring, meaning there's no way of telling which one of them is actually the host, which is a really smart plan. Quite intimidating too, the invader's running back down the path, being chased down hard, but then this happens. Actually unbelievable, not only did he just pull off one of the coolest parries I've ever seen, but out of those three bloodthirsty white phantoms, he actually got the host. What are the chances of that? That was sick, man. Congratulations. Number four, we have an invading pyromancer who is having a little bit of trouble with the host and summons lightning spears, of which they seem to have a lot. Things get decidedly worse as a third white summon makes an appearance and starts joining in on the projectile casting spam. And then, to be quite honest, things just go crazy. This is probably an invader's worst nightmare. The air is just filled with so many damaging attacks that you physically can't dodge all of them. There's great arrows being fired and lightning spears which also deal small splash damage which catch him a few times. I'd say his chances of winning are almost zero at this point. He decides to try and rush in on the host but gets a great arrow to the face and when he rolls away he still tries to get a little hit on the host. This guy is persistent. Thankfully a new game plus NPC Red Phantom was nearby and starts chasing two of them up the stairs and the remaining white summon dies down below to the Royal Sentinels. The invader uses Forbidden Sun, and together with the NPC Red Phantom, they finally take out the host, and I imagine he's pretty excited. Yep, there's the wiggle wiggle dance, but congratulations man. Number three comes with its own commentary. Look all this skirts. Have one down. I'm going to parry this phantom. Do the poking attack. Do, do it, do it, do it. Do the poking attack. Do it, poking attack. What? What? That's what I want. That's what I want. It's just you and me. It's awesome to see some Havel monsters get spanked like that, that was great. Now at number 2 we have a 3v1 in the Forest of Fallen Giants and the host gets backstabbed straight away. But the two Sunbros are a pretty big threat. One of the dual fist weapons chases him down but gets skillfully parried. Almost doesn't get the repost due to the lightning spear but luckily he recovers in time to pull it off. It ends up being a one hit kill but he's definitely on much lower health now and once again we have a joint lightning spear spam session all around the tree that lasts for a very long time. 
What is it with gankers and lightning spears? It's an incredibly tense standoff though, he is on such low health. Eventually things get even worse as suddenly the host switches it up and starts firing off forbidden suns at him. It could have all ended right there. In comes the buffed up sunbro and unbelievably gets parried. Massive respect for that, it was such a risky thing to do, but it paid off as that is another summon down. Once again, it's just the host remaining. He did have enough time to run around the tree and heal back up to full health and then head on towards the host, who is clearly not sure what to do anymore. I imagine he's probably running out of lightning spears. Then the inevitable chase begins, for some reason the host decides to jump across the cliffs and have a bit of fun doing some parkour, but in actuality I think he's realised that he genuinely has no chance against this guy and is just stalling for time. The invader catches up and backstabs him for some good damage. He then switches up ready for some hex castings, but in the end he doesn't even bother using them. Instead, he just ends it all with a final R1 attack, and just like that, that's another three-man gang squad taken care of. And now of course we come to number one. A blue invader in the Tower of Flame having a normal 1v1 fight with a host. Or is he? <laughs> in fact, this is all a trap. There are two white summons up on that higher platform, each with great bows who are trying their absolute hardest to shoot down the blue invader like a fish in a barrel. Now, to get the number one spot, it has to be unique and different in some way, and I think you'll all agree this is something special. Despite being hit with great arrows and under the immense added pressure they bring, the blue invader fights like a champ. Bearing in mind the host seems pretty good as well, he even has a dark buffed katana, which is nothing to laugh at. Knowing that at any moment you could get smashed with a great arrow is going to severely mess with your head and change your playstyle, but he's remaining so calm and controlled doing his absolute best without running away, which is what I would have done, honestly. I haven't actually counted, but you can visibly see all the narrow escapes this guy has. Great arrows hitting the ground a few centimeters from his feet, it's kind of epic in a way. And then to top everything off, the host actually heals. I could not believe that. Thankfully he's punished for it and falls to his death, but that confirms the clip for the number one spot in my mind. Really awesome job, man. All right, now, YouTube no longer allows attached messages, and the way you're gonna have to send me your submissions from now on is by going to my channel, clicking the About tab, and then you click on the Send Message button at the bottom and type in your message. Since you cannot attach videos anymore, you need to provide the actual link to your video, and your video needs to be public or unlisted, not private. And then just give me permission to use your video, and that should be it. Alright, thank you everyone for watching. Check the description for any other information you might need, such as uh, next week's topic, and I will see you all in the next video. Like a naked dog